Okay, back on the 63 Westinghouse record player. In the last video, we got the amplifier working nicely, and today we'll work on the Girard record changer. And we're set up on the patio table with the Girard record changer out of the Westinghouse console. It's about 76 degrees out here today, and I thought I'd spend a little time outside working on this. Now the main problem this turntable had when I tested it in the console was that the platter was turning at the wrong speed and would sometimes not turn at all. And that's usually caused by a dirty idler wheel or a worn idler wheel or and or lubrication problems in the mechanism. But the first thing we have to do is remove the turntable platter. And the way you do that, there's a little clip here in the center that has to be carefully removed. You want to be careful because you don't want that clip to go flying across the room and you'll never find it again. And once that clip is removed, you can lift the turntable platter off and do what needs to be done. So we'll do that right now. We now have the turntable platter removed and one thing you want to watch out for when you take these off is sometimes when you lift the platter off one or more washers will stick under here due to lubrication that's on the washers it causes them to stick here and you want to make sure not to lose any such washers that may happen to stick because you'll need them when you put it all back together and here's the inside of the mechanism here's the drive wheel right here this wheel is still soft but the surface is very slick and I believe that's the reason it's not driving the turntable correctly and for that we use a product called Rubber Renew I've used this many times and it'll it'll renew the grip back to some old idler wheels if they're not too far gone if they're too far gone you'll just have to send them to one of the many services that rebuild these wheels because they're not available as new manufactured parts anymore and it cost around 30 bucks to have one of these wheels rebuilt another problem I found on these Girards is this cycling gear the grease here will become hard and it will not rotate freely as you can see this one appears to be in fairly good shape but I'm going to take it apart and lubricate it anyway and also this trip mechanism here sometimes will freeze up which I will also lubricate that just for preventative maintenance and I'll also clean all the old lubrication off of the center here spindle and re-lubricate that as well as remove the motor take it apart clean it and oil it and do any lubrication and cleaning that needs to be done to the underside and this thing ought to be good to go now let me pause a minute and say and I probably should have said this to start with I'm not I don't consider myself a record changer repair expert well actually I don't consider myself an expert at anything but I'm I'm more confident in repairing electronic circuits than I am record changers but I have gotten to the point where I can get a good many of them going again. The procedures I use may not necessarily be the right way, but they've worked for me and that's all that matters. And just to show you real quick how this motor drives the turntable, we have this rubber wheel here that I've already showed you that transfers the rotation of the motor to the turntable and rotates the platter. And this particular turntable plays 16, 33, 45, and 78 RPM. And how that is selected is via this speed selector lever here. And if you'll notice on the motor shaft, we have different diameters here. This is 78, 45, 33, and 16. And when you move the speed selector lever, it places the idler wheel in the appropriate 
position on the shaft for the desired speed. And by the way, look what just came in the mail. This package from VM Audio Enthusiast. I ordered a fan steel P228 cartridge to put in this turntable because the local parts house didn't have it. And I just have to say, Gary, at VM Audio Enthusiast is a very nice person to deal with, very honest, very straightforward. He sells cartridges, needles, parts for VM record changers, rebuilds idler wheels. He, he knows his stuff and his service is quick. And if you're interested, it's www.thevoiceofmusic.com. And here's the new cartridge, a Fansteel P228, which is the equivalent of a Varco TN8U. This is a universal half-inch mount cartridge. It puts out around 0.9 volts. And I ordered the version with the flip-over LP stylus on one side and 78 stylus on the other side. Since this is a four-speed turntable, I want to be able to play all records. And this also comes with the solder-on cartridge terminals, which will have to be used on this turntable because the original cartridge had flat pins. This has got round pins, so I'll have to use the supplied terminals. And it even comes with some tone arm wire for using these cartridges in mono record players. You can bridge the left and right to mono. But enough on the cartridge, we'll get to that later, but back on the idler wheel. What we'll need to do is remove this idler wheel, and to do so, you need to carefully remove this little clip right here. And I can't stress enough, be careful. It's very easy for these clips to fly across the room. I think I've already mentioned that earlier, but it's worth mentioning, mentioning again. Once you get the clip off, there'll be some washers above and below the idler wheel. You want to keep up with these washers and and remember how many washers are on top and how many washers are under the bottom here. So I'll remove the idler wheel now. And here's the idler wheel removed. It's still nice and rubbery and there's no dents or flat spots in it that I can find. It's just very slick and a little bit glazed. So what I'll do, I'll apply some of this rubber renew to a paper towel and apply the rubber renew to this wheel and let it sit a few minutes and then I'll wipe off the excess and it should be good to go again. Oh, and one other thing, it's probably best that you use this stuff outside because it it does have a powerful odor to it to say the least and really don't want these fumes stinking up your shop. We've now applied the rubber renew to the idler wheel and you can see the black stuff that came off on the paper towel. I will let that sit a few minutes and then wipe off the excess and hopefully it'll be good to go. If not, I'll just have to have the idler wheel rebuilt which if I can save thirty dollars by doing it this way then that makes me that much more happier. Okay, upon further inspection, I can see the rubber on this idler wheel is cracking. As you can probably see on the camera, so I guess we're stuck with sending this off and having it rebuilt. Which is probably the best thing anyway. I have cleaned this enough to where it will probably work temporarily for testing purposes, but we will have to have this rebuilt which that'll make it more reliable in the long run, so I guess that won't be too bad. So now we'll continue with the rest of the refurbishment process. Moving on with this, we'll now clean the inside rim of the turntable platter with standard rubbing alcohol that's available anywhere. We'll also clean the motor shaft. And when you're lubricating one of these, never ever get any kind of lubrication on the motor shaft or the rubber drive wheel or the inside rim of the turntable. Because if you do, the turntable won't operate properly. There'll be wow and flutter or possibly no turntable 
rotation at all. If you accidentally get any lubrication on any of those parts, just clean it off with rubbing alcohol and forget it never happened and be more careful in the future. I'm also going to replace the cartridge. I'll have to unsolder these original cartridge clips and replace them with the round cartridge clips that came with the replacement cartridge. And as you can see, one of the clips already broke off of the red cartridge lead. I'll just use my solder and iron tip to melt off a little bit of the insulation there. Those wires are so small that you have to be very careful with them and they're very hard to deal with. And in this case, red is our right positive, white is, I mean, excuse me, red is positive right channel, green is negative right channel, white is positive left channel, and black is negative left channel. And I will also clean any further lubrication that needs to come off with a paper towel and rubbing alcohol. And I'll use a product called Phono Lube where grease is necessary. And I'll just use standard blue motor gray 3-in-1 oil for the drive motor. Okay, I'll get this done and we'll give this thing a little demonstration before I send the idler wheel off for rebuilding. Probably also going to replace these rubber motor mounting grommets too. And I have now cleaned the inside rim of the turntable and the motor shaft. And you can see we got a little black stuff off of there. And I'll clean everything else that needs cleaning in a similar fashion, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to demonstrate all of that. I think you get the idea, and I don't want this video to turn into two hours worth of record changer cleaning. So now we'll reinstall the drive wheel, turntable table platter, and make sure it's turning properly, and then we'll install the cartridge and give it a little test run. Okay, I'm back down in the workshop with this. I decided it would probably not be a good idea to do this up on the patio table. Too much risk of losing little small parts. So the first thing we have to do is dismount this original holder and mount the new holder. Unsolder the original cartridge clips. Solder on the new cartridge clips. Connect them to the new cartridge. Clip the new cartridge to the holder and we ought to be ready to hear some Okay, I got the cartridge replaced, but it was a royal pain in the butt trying to solder those little bitty wires in place. And unfortunately, the idler wheel is going to have to be rebuilt because it's too slick for the automatic function to work without stopping and the speed is slow. But the amp works and it sounds good. There's our base. Be a small unit, it's got a decent sound. Okay, more to come later whenever I get the idler wheel rebuilt.